Hey, I'm Randy and you're watching The Cheap Audio Man. Here at The Cheap Audio Man, we talk about high value, hi-fi, and home theater equipment. And today, it's very exciting. This is our first ever soundbar video. And if you don't think that soundbars can play good music, just stick around, see if you like it. Anyway, it's the Klipsch Cinema 600. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and let's talk about the Klipsch Cinema 600. We are not in the office. We're in my living room and it's big. It has very high ceilings. It's an open concept. And quite frankly, when I first put the Klipsch Cinema 600 in here, I didn't have high hopes. It wasn't that I thought it wasn't going to sound great. I just didn't think it could fill this space up with sound. I was wrong. The Cinema 600 comes in basically two configurations. You can get a 3.1 system that comes with a subwoofer. That's what the point one means. Or you can get the 5.1 system, which comes with wireless surrounds. So it's $500 right now for the 3.1 system also you can add the surrounds later if you want to and that's 200 dollars right now on amazon so all in you would be seven seven hundred dollars for the entire system one must consider i just did a video on home theater for less than a thousand dollars and i had you know we talked about a receiver we talked about five channels and a subwoofer that was a thousand dollars this is $700. Now I know one can argue that a receiver with five speakers and a subwoofer may be able to do things differently. However, if one is even 50%, 50-50, I still think you should give this product some consideration because I was blown away. Really, in, in this room, I had the biggest issue, not with the front channels, not with the subwoofer, but with the rear channels, and I know you can't see it, and I'm not gonna show it to you because it's a mess, because I have 17,000 children. Just kidding, I have 12. Just kidding, I have less than 12. Less than 12 children. The rear of this room opens up into the kitchen eating area. There's not a wall back there. It hasn't ever been easy to get rear surrounds back there, but I would actually, when I had my home theater system in here, I ran wires underneath the couch and then I would cover those up, and then I had surround speakers on stands that when I, I knew I could actually watch a movie unencumbered, I would pull those stands out, then plug it back in, and then place them behind me a little bit to the side. I couldn't enjoy surround sound all the time. I just couldn't because, well, people would knock them over, and sometimes I would even knock them over because they were just out there in place. Point being is, the surround speakers being wireless and being quite compact opened up a huge opportunity for me to start enjoying surround sound again in a very open concept room. And it didn't disappoint. The sound bar itself is the three front channels. So you have your left channel, your center channel, and your right channel. And they both have two drivers. So the left and right have two drivers, a tweeter and then a mid woofer type it's pretty small two drivers tweeter other driver and then in the middle you have an mtm very traditional configuration so you have a tweeter in the center and then to the sides you have two other drivers and then on the right again you have another tweeter and then another driver there are ways that you can configure the system so even if you don't have the rear surrounds you can basically control the dispersion a little bit through DSP on the remote. The remote is very simple, but very useful. One can control the voices or the mid range. So the center channel, you can bring it up or bring it down, depending upon what kind of mix the movie or the television show has. You can control surround levels if you have the surround channels hooked up and you can control dispersion if you don't have rear channels and it actually works pretty well. Now, I never got sound to come from behind me per se, but when I was playing around with the dispersion, I definitely heard a difference when I had it on the widest level. So the lighting is going to change because I'm in the living room and I have big windows and the sun is going under clouds 
and then coming out. But I wanted to do it in here because number one, it's different because here's the sound bar. This is where the sound bar has been living for the better part of a month. I wasn't optimistic because of the sheer size of the room. One of my favorite movies to test surround systems is the third, it's the Rise of Skywalker. It's the third Star Wars in the, the last generation. It's like the ninth Star Wars movie. And well, but, I mean, if you add Rogue One and that, okay, anyway. It's the last one, okay? When Rey and Kylo Ren and they go get the Emperor. The beginning sequence of that movie is awesome because you got Kylo Ren, he's going around, he's finding the little stone to find where the Emperor is. You have spaceships coming from behind you. You got Kylo Ren, you have him going to see. The Emperor's voice is really low and Kylo Ren, it, anyway. You have this lightsaber coming to the light. Very good. It's, First five minutes, you can pretty much sum up how good your home theater system is just by watching the first few segments of that movie. Five minutes, 10 minutes, max. Two things that blew me away. One, the level of separation that I had. It felt like the speakers were much wider than where the sound bar actually was. Two, the bass. This system has a sealed subwoofer. It's a pretty large subwoofer. The amount of bass that it pumped into this big room, and I've had 12 inch, $500 subwoofers not do as good of a job with filling the room with bass. Now, maybe that was tighter bass, but for movies and movie purposes, I was absolutely blown away by the amount of bass that this subwoofer put into this room because it's huge. One of the other things I really liked about this system is how easy it was. The only thing I, now there is a way to put it into pairing mode and things like that, but I literally plugged in the sound bar, I plugged in the subwoofer and they just connected. Plugged in the surround speakers and they just connected. So I didn't even have to go into the pairing mode. Now, for whatever reason, you drop connection, you can put it back in pairing. I never had to do it. It just turned on and it just worked. This soundbar also has a night mode, so you can reduce the amount of bass, you can control the amount of bass, you can control everything. Surrounds, front channel for basically dialogue and things like that. The other thing that blew me away is just how dynamic this was. My daughter and I were watching Pirates of the Caribbean. We tried to watch it a year or two ago. Got a little too scary. She was, let's watch it again. So we were watching Pirates of the Caribbean again. It blew me away how dynamic it was. So when we had the levels set with voices and everything, and then there was a huge action scene, it was loud. And I mean, it wasn't straining loud. It was deafening in here. The ability for this thing to go from here to here and not strain Blew me away. The Cinema 600 will do Dolby 5.1, also DTS 5.1. I had this on, this is an, an old LG TV. It's not a smart TV, it's just an old 1080 TV. It still looks great though. And I, frankly, I kind of prefer watching movies on this because there's just a certain sharpness that this TV has that my 4K TVs don't have. I just enjoy it. It looks very cinematic in here. This doesn't even have CEC or HDMI arc. It doesn't. It has one digital coaxial out. The Cinema 600 doesn't have a coaxial in. It has an optical digital in and it has an HDMI in. So I put a converter box on here to convert the digital coaxial into digital optical and put it in there. It didn't work very well. I wasn't getting Dolby. So what I did is I took an HDMI audio extractor. So I plugged my Apple TV into the audio extractor via HDMI. There's an HDMI out. I took that into the TV and then it has an optical out. I took the optical into the sound bar, set the Apple TV to Dolby 5.1 and guess what? Dolby 5.1 worked. So even on an older TV, if you have a fire stick or an Apple TV that you can control the audio output, I was still able to get true Dolby 5.1 surround sound, even on an old TV. Now with my, I have a newer TV, it's a TCL 5 series, very good TV upstairs, and it worked flawlessly with the Arc. I was just very excited that I could take an older TV and still figure out a way to get this to work. Music, let's talk about music 
through the Cinema 600. Before I get to that, the Cinema 600 does come with an app. It's not just the Cinema 600 app, it is a Klipsch app. It is reported that there will be an EQ included with this app sooner or later. It hasn't happened. When you get this and you hook it up, make sure to update the firmware right away. Your phone connects to it via Bluetooth and the Bluetooth works flawlessly right away with my phone. I tried some music through it and I was surprised. It sounds good. Now, did I get true stereo separation and imaging? Yes and no. In a way, and I had this happen when I did a review of the Fluences, the Fluence 5 channel surround sound. So when I put the receiver into Dolby Music and I tweaked the levels, I got a soundstage and imaging treat that I've never had before on two channels. With the Cinema 600, when you dial in the dialogue just right, there can be a wonderful soundstage. The singer, you can basically control where the singer is at in the soundstage depending upon how you have the dialogue set. I didn't get true separation with a soundstage behind and up and things like that, but I did get left and right separation and I did for sure know when the instruments were to the left and to the right. Was it just like good two channel stereo? No, it was different, but it was still good. And I would say that even with music, the Cinema 600 is going to be enough for most people, unless you are a two channel purist. And I know others talk about soundbar replacements. And I think if one is mostly music, then I would look into a soundbar replacement. But if you're like us in this room, for the most part is TV and movies. Every now and again, I do a little bit of music in here. And guess what? The ability for the Cinema 600 to play music is way better than I thought it would be. As far as how does it sound? Well, the subwoofer sounds great. Mid-range, for the most part, sounds great. Treble sounds great. There is a bit of sibilance. I can control that, but even when I had the dialogue or the center channel dialed down to the lowest, I still heard some sibilance. Was it a deal breaker? No, it wasn't horrible. But if I'm really looking at this very critically, there is some sibilance there. If you are 20%, 25% music, mostly movies, it's great. Sorry, looks like the sun came out from under a cloud. This reminds me of my first videos I did on my back porch where I would start out and I would be fine and then all of a sudden the sun would come out from underneath a cloud and the whole part of the video would be overly bright. We're gonna run with it. So Cinema 600, do I recommend it? Absolutely. At $500, I would challenge anybody to put together a home theater system, even a LCR system, left, center, right, with a subwoofer and a receiver that is going to best this with sound. There is just so much one would have to do to curate a 3.1 channel system to get it to sound as good as this. The wonderful thing about the Cinema 600 is simplicity. If one isn't inclined to continually tweak with settings on the receiver, figuring out which speakers to get, where to put the speakers, which subwoofer to get, how to blend the subwoofer. If one is just looking for simplicity, I don't think this can be beat at $500. Add the wireless surrounds for an additional $200 and one will have a 5.1 channel system that rivals things that are gonna take up way more space in your house, are gonna be more complicated to put together and probably going to be more expensive and maybe not even get as good a sound as this. Add to that any open concept house that doesn't have rear walls, you can add these surrounds very easily not be tripping over any wires, not having to run wires up through your wall, over the ceiling or anything else. Frankly, this is one of the best things that I've found because now I can finally enjoy true surround sound and not have to worry about someone tripping over a speaker stand and breaking my speaker and tripping over wires and things like that. Blown away. I'm blown away by the, the rear surrounds especially. It's simple, it's a great value. And even for music, for parties, even for just sitting back and enjoying music, it's good. It's better than I thought it would be. 
So if you want to support the channel, you can sign up for Patreon, patreon.com slash cheap audio. And every Sunday night, we have Patreon only Zooms. We also have a Patreon only Facebook group. You can also sign up for Amazon Music. There's a link in the description. Click on the link, sign up. You get three or four months for free. You maybe get some Disney Plus for free. All my test track playlists and Satanic Panic and Leg Warmer playlists are in the description. If you sign up for a trial, even if you cancel, I still get a couple of dollars. You can also use the link to buy the Cinema 600 or anything else that is linked in the description. Those are affiliate links, which means I will get a commission. It doesn't cost you any more, but I will get a commission. So it's a great way to support the channel without having to have any money out for it. So we're going to binge watch. So binge watch your favorite movies and TV shows through the Cinema 600 and maybe listen to a little bit of music and fill your soul with happiness. And with that, I'm Randy. I'm the Cheap Audio Man.